Welcome, everyone. Today, Daniel and I will be sharing with you Chatterjee's argument for an extended term mixed method evaluation design and how it's valuable across diverse initiatives, not just education. Sit down and get ready. Here we go. What you are about to witness is a scientific experiment, a true laboratory one. There will be an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is the intervention which is manipulated by the researcher, the dependent, the anticipated or expected outcome. In this case, the independent is baking soda added to vinegar, and the dependent outcome or expected outcome is a chemical reaction. In education, many evaluation designs are based on randomized control trials to determine the outcome of an intervention or change. Federal policies such as the No Child Left Behind Act use singular research methods to draw conclusions about what works in education. When this cannot be done, quasi-experiments are used to estimate or anticipate the outcomes of an intervention. Randomized control trials are valuable but they don't capture the contextual circumstances, such as the sociocultural aspect that education is laden with. Sound evaluation design should be based on broader criteria that use proven evaluation research principles and are designed to be decision-oriented, not conclusive. Sound field evaluation should explore causal inferences in context or real-time environments. The object of study may take shape as a pilot program or even at more advanced stages be implemented at more one sites. This helps to determine if the treatment variable takes on different qualitative characteristics. Chatterjee stated, without systematic study of these qualitative differences in context, thus cause-effect questions are difficult, if not possible, to answer. The simple cause and effect experiment, such as the one we saw from Tammy a minute ago, is quite straightforward. It's conducted in a sterile environment. There's lots of control. There's a dependent and independent variable. However, what about those situations where uh, it's a little bit more complex? Uh, there's, con you know, where there's context. Uh, there's the natural environment where there's humans involved and there's many stakeholders. In 1981, Campbell articulated the idea of an experimenting society. Let me write this down for you. Uh, here we go. Experimenting society. So this means that uh, a society, society seeks solutions to problems, solutions to challenges, through systematic field research and experimentation. So in a complex situation with many moving parts, uh, wouldn't we want a more detailed, rich uh, data to base our decisions from? And this is where extended term mixed methods comes into play. So uh, during this video, I think we'll continue just calling it um, E, T, M, M. We'll just refer it to E, T, M, M from now on. E, T, M, M incorporates techniques from uh, both quantitative and qualitative research traditions and deliberately tracks a program throughout, the, uh, throughout its life, um, sprinkling in those uh, formative and summative studies throughout the life of the program. So, I've just, you know, mentioned one principle. There's a lot more to it than that. And as a case study, we're going to be looking at um, a TransLink validity or viability study. I only, I only do videos one take, so if I say something wrong, please forgive me, okay? So, we're looking at it through the lens of a, a TransLink viability study for a gondola link to SFU. So here's the so-called problem. 
TransLink states that there are 25,000 trips made up and down Burnaby Mountain on a daily basis. That's a lot. And this is not just for school, but for work, business, and recreation. Anyone that's spent time working or attending SFU as a student can tell you how bad the commute is when it snows or even rains hard. TransLink has thought of a creative solution, and this is to link the SkyTrain station to a gondola, uh, which can take riders to the top of Burnaby Mountain. It's being promoted as safe, environmentally smart, cost-effective. Uh, riders can expect to have fast, frequent, and reliable service, even during the bad weather. So it sounds pretty good. Fast, reliable, comfortable service. Cabins departing every couple of minutes. But how did they come up with this uh, so-called treatment to this problem? Was it supported by a holistic appraisal of formally gathered research data with mixed methods over time? This idea was first proposed in 2014 and revisited in 2017. Recently, 2019, Burnaby City Council endorsed a recommendation that would support a gondola link from a SkyTrain station, yet to be determined, to the top of Burnaby Mountain. But where does ETTM come into play with all this? Well, there are five principles we could apply to address the complexity of this wicked problem. The problem of year-round accessibility for a growing community at the top of Burnaby Mountain. It's an exciting time right now because the project has started to get momentum uh, starting with uh, in January 2020. There was a uh, pre-engagement, phase one and two was the public engagement which is currently running from September to November 2020. And a final investment plan and project approval is scheduled for early 2021. So there's a fitting quote from the Chatterjee article and it says on there, it says, dedication of time and resources to formally study the most critical variables in situ, thus is standard practice for the prudent researcher. And this is true. If you care to look on the TransLink website, they have been doing their homework. There has been systematic field research and experimentation. Quantitative and qualitative methods have been mixed together and used throughout the project so far, uh, with many formulative and summative studies. So this is evidence that TransLink are using some of the ETMM principles. So well done, TransLink. Chatterjee, Tammy and I, we all approve. We agree with Chatterjee. The knowledge gained through the early research on a program can help researchers identify a small set of sharply formulated causal hypotheses to test from a complex world of primary, secondary and tertiary causal factors. Over our case study, you heard Daniel refer to the five guiding principles of Chatterjee's extended term mixed method evaluation design. I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight them. First, extended term refers to the first and foundational principle of time. This key evaluation design component employs a long-term timeline that allows for a systematic study of a program or initiative. The life of a program can be charted from its early adoption through to full-scale operations. The remaining principles are deliberate and are linked to the lifespan of a program. The second guiding principle of ETMM designs are guided by a program's theory or its goal. In our case study, it's to improve the transportation of more passengers up and down SFU with greater ease and safety. As Chatterjee states, once the program theory is charted, it sheds light on multiple program facets and linkages and can guide decision making on which links to examine. The third guiding principle is the inclusion of formative and summative evaluation phases. 
Formative evaluation is meant to help to inform decision making based on what's working or what's not. Summative evaluations is higher stake and intended to gu- guide the decision making about continuing or discontinuing the program or initiative. As Daniel mentioned, sharply focused causal questions incorporating a well defined rather than ill defined treatment condition is important to incorporate. The knowledge gained through the earlier research of a program, which are reflected in principles one through three, can help researchers not only comprehend, but better define the field treatment conditions while considering their context. Finally, the last principle promotes the use of mixed methods of research or tools of inquiry. Chatterjee and both Daniela and I agree that incorporating both qualitative and quantitative research are imperative when determining what works, whether it is an educational, organizational, or community initiative. So whether you are tasked with designing an evaluation for a large-scale project or an education, narrowed research criteria is not the answer. ETMM incorporates sound and proven evaluation design and is foundational to effective field evaluations. It is gaining credibility and is becoming the method of choice when it comes to evaluation design. So as we've seen, the uh, MEX method that we've been talking about has both uh, qualitative and quantitative data mixed together. So qualitative data has uh, a degree of subjectivity. And in the past, it's been accused of being unscientific. So what's your response to this in light of the popularity of mixed methods? You can see here on the screen, we've got the popularity increasing. Well, Daniel, as you mentioned uh, during our presentation, the prudent researcher uses more than just one um, methodology of research. So I think qualitative is really important. It captures the context in which educational programs are happening, or for example, the uh, gondola initiative. We can't solely base um, our opinions on only scientific research. It doesn't include context. Daniel, I'd like to pose a question back to you. Do you think there were any issues with double hermeneutics with this project or initiative? So that is a, um, a great point there and excellent uh, pronunciation, by the way. Uh, we're talking about two frames of meaning here. So, for example, the European interpretation of what is heritage, archaeology and religion compared to a native understanding. And for sure, I can see there may be some issues here. It's actually been a real pleasure working with you, Tammy. It's nice to work with a professional that shows up on time and does the work. It's fantastic. Look at this um, route, these three routes here that they've proposed for SFU. What do you think? Well, thanks, Daniel. It's been a real pleasure working with you as well. Uh, As far as the routes go, I wonder even about the validity of this project anymore uh, due to you know, COVID has really kind of changed how we're looking at education. And I wonder, because of the online environment being the way of the future, if even this gondola is uh, a worthwhile initiative anymore. Well, let's not be pessimistic, Tammy. Uh, Maybe it could be a great tourist attraction. Uh, The nice thing about ETMM, it allows researchers for a quick understanding of the project. So if things change... Uh, They are on it. Also, ETMM allows for an experimenting society approach. In other words, a chance for society to learn about itself in a collaborative environment. 